so that was um, that was going from the and um, the Australian National Data Service from from their recommendations for data. As I said, there are a lot of other um, examples of of data management plans, and probably all of you have looked online and looked at different plans and, and looked through them. And it is um, it's pretty daunting to think about all of this. And again, um, probably having it, it really has to come from the researcher wanting to have a complete data management plan um, in order to, to think through all of this um, unless you unless you are working like I said with graduate students or something like that so um, for Na North Carolina State University um, one of the things that they focus that they really focus on is that first one the roles and responsibilities and um, so they got two different lines that's going here um, one of the things that uh, so so they really drill down into the roles and responsibility and um, ask for a list of not just staff members but people's roles um, as a staff member because of course people are going not going to stay on for the whole project so um, who's responsible for what and um, you know, you want to, you do want to name specific people but then also say what their their position is so that when that person moves on um, you you know what what needs to be taken over um, they also they also say for it's a good idea to um, I mean this sort of fits into um, Sue's question about the, the budget um, you know what what time allocations are you going to need for each of those roles and responsibilities? What training might people need to get to be able to fulfill those roles? Um, are there going to be staff who aren't on the project who are going to be a, a part of this? It might be somebody in the library. It might be somebody in, um, in an IT department. Um, and do you need to pay for those hours or um, for instance, for us, and I think a lot of places, library is overhead, um, but our IT department charges by the hour if you're using IT services. So often they try to sneak in and, and get the library to do things instead of the IT department. Um, <coughs> but again, that's 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 part of the, the budgeting or just even the hours hours that you need. Um, and so. Who's re and then the one thing is whose responsibility is it going to be to go back and look at the data management plan and see where you're adhering to it and where maybe you're getting off track. So um, that's that's a very important role in, in the whole process. The plan is not going to stay the same the way you thought. Or well. It, I guess it could, but I don't think that's real life. That when you, as you get into things, things are are going to change. Um, <coughs> so, also um, in looking at who owns the data, um, if the PI who was responsible for this project leaves the institution. But they've stored their their data. They have their data stored with you. Then who's going to be responsible for for that data, and who's going to take over? Um, who's going to take that over? And then, and over time, does it then become the um, whose responsibility that it that does it then become? So, for instance, in our case, um, once the once the shipboard data has has come. While it's on the ship, the library has no responsibility over for it. It's the PI and um, IT on the ship. And then when they come back, it usually transfers over to the shipboard IT people are responsible for making sure that that data gets to the data library. Once it's in the data library, we've assumed the responsibility for that data. It's, it's not processed in any way. We um, make sure that we have metadata for it. Um, knowing what instruments were used and where it was collected. But other than that, um, there's not a whole lot that the library does with it, but we are ultimately responsible for that and making sure that the, um, that it's, that the tapes or the disks or whatever are, are taken care of. 
Um, so, um, and at, at North Carolina, they actually go f further than that, and they, they give an example, and they say, um, the project will assign a qualified data manager certified in disclosure risk management, management to ask, act as a steward for the data while they are being collected, processed, and analyzed. So I'm, um, you know, what that certified in disclosure risk management sounds like you need to get some training for the, the people on your staff to make sure that you have someone who's actually, that's, they don't, they don't insist that that's happened, that's just their, their recommendation. Um, they also, um, uh, North Carolina, like a lot of universities in the U.S. and a lot of institutions, the institution owns the PI's data. So ultimately, they own it. Um, if you ask most researchers, they're going to say that they own their data, that they're responsible for the data. And this is one of those things where um, I was surprised to actually to see that North Carolina State University made it very clear that their institution owns the data because often it's, it's sort of a gray area that people don't necessarily like to talk about the fact that the institution that you work for is the one who owns your data. I'm not sure how it is where all of, where all of you are sometimes it um, but often it may be it may be straight more straightforward um, than that and, and everybody might know that the institution is ultimately responsible um, yeah I think you might look in your intellectual property policy right mm-hmm mm -hmm. right and that's I mean I think that's one thing it, it often is spelled out in the intellectual property um, but again I, I think that if you asked, asked most researchers, they, um, they feel that it's, it's their data, that they can make the decisions to do with it as they want, as, as they wish. And if they uh, go someplace else, that they can take their data with them. This also applies to grad students. Um, and there have, been, there have been issues with this. Um, a grad student doing a work in a, in a certain lab um, do they own the data? Is it, is it, you know, it's their, it's their data, it's their research for their dissertation, um, but if for some reason they leave the lab that they're working in and they go somewhere else, do they need the permission of the PI to take their research data with them? And in most cases, it's, you know, everybody is going to say, yes, that's fine, you can use the data, and, um, but, but it is, it's still, it's, I think it's something that a lot of places people don't necessarily want to delve into too much. That, um, so then, um, another, um, another website that I looked at was from the University of Arizona, um, and uh, they, um, they, they get very much into talking about the, um, the, the metadata and, and, the, and, and the standards and the best practices and so all of that, that that you were talking about yesterday. They really focus, that's really where, where they focus on. Um, these are sort of all of the questions. A lot of places um, who do data management guidance, uh, data management planning guidance for researchers, have it as questions. Sometimes it'll be a checklist, but often it's questions, and um, if you can drill down and get more more information uh, um, about them. Um, another, um, the University of Oregon. University of Oregon. I think it's Oregon. I think I wrote that wrong. I think it's Oregon State University. I, I sometimes get the. I uh, <laughs> I'm unfortunately get them, or maybe I'm looking at both. But anyhow, um, they. Um, they are, um, maybe I'm off here, uh, but they're, they're very interested as we've been talking in, uh, as we're talking about the, the archiving and the preservation, um, really making sure that researchers understand um, the, all of all, everything that you need to think about as far as, um, as a backup strategy, the difference between archiving and, um, and 
backing up your da your data, um, and and really that long term long term preservation and how it how it's going to be going to be shared. Um, um, so the. Um, the UK data archiving webpage um, on 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 right here. Yeah. Um, on on data storage. Um, they go through all of these these bullets and um, highly um, hi highly recommend going through you know all of it and the different types of data. Um, really, really descriptive um, and, and good, good examples. I'm sorry, I think I'm a little lost between my slides and my notes. Um, MIT was one of the, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology was one of the first places that really got into working with researchers on, on data management plans. So I just put up sort of their, their basic four, um, four, four, bu four bullet points. They have they were a, a leader in the beginning. They're, they still work with researchers a lot with data management, but they have found a lot of the same struggles that I think a lot of us have found, that having actually working with researchers um, to get them to create a good data management plan and finding how that fits into the research process without having a mandate behind it, um, th they have, they've, they've really struggled with. So um, in the early days of, of data, particularly, this is the MIT library, so particularly libraries worth working with data. Um, they, were, they were definitely a leader, and they, they still are a leader, but they're, um, you know, they have the same struggles that, that the rest of us uh, do as well. Um, so these are the, the resources that I, that I used for, for putting this together. And, um, what I wanted us to do now is I have an activity which I haven't ever actually tried with a group. So um, there, um, let's see. There's there's a librarian um, who works with researchers in data. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. I'm not there yet. I did. I did. Um, I I did get off on my um, on the two because one of the. Um, one of the other issues that I, f I really didn't get into was um, eth were, were, are the ethical issues around your data. So we talked about intellectual property and who owns the data, um, but any time that the data is going to be preserved or shared, you want you need to make sure that you are getting that you, that you have permission to do that from everybody who might have ownership over the over the data, um, and then. As we talked about, you know, if you do, if you are working with human subjects, um, even as if you're doing surveys of people, um, making sure that the data is anon anonymized and um, that people are that people's identities will be will be protected, um, and then if you have data that is sensitive, um, how is that going to be? stored securely and then also transferred security. So um, ethical issues can affect, you know, how, how you store your data, who can use it, how long it's kept, um, and any, um, any sort of ethics questions that you have, probably you want to go to your institution with um, and make sure that you are complying with any um, regulations that, that they have about it. So, um, and again, this this in human health that that is important. But um, if you are doing survey, if you have information that has surveys that in, that involves, um, you know, if you're if sur you're surveying fishermen for catch, um, if any t any time you are dealing with people, there are immediately more privacy concerns that that come up so um, this is um, it, it's just a really important always an important thing at the beginning of your project probably one of the flags that would come up first would be if there's anything that deals with humans in any way um, 
that you want to make sure that you are covering all of, of the ethical basis. And then um, also um, the, the intellectual property rights. We talked about the difference between the, the PI and the institution, um, but there may also be requirements from um, whoever is funding the, the, the data, um, and they may have intellectual property restrictions or requirements for your, your data as, as well. So um, it's, it's just really important. If, there's, if the data is going to be reused, does it, is it going to require a license? Um, we talked a bit about Creative Commons and, and why you might not want to have the, the data licensed. But again, going back to that discussion earlier about open science and all the different ways that the data can, can be licensed, and it may, some of that may um, not be 100% your own choice. It may be that the funder has mandated that all of the data needs to be open. Um, I think more and more government funding is moving in that direction. Um, so it's it's all. Um, but on the other hand, do you want? Do is is there a valid reason for postponing um, making the, the data open? So um, if, if there's going to be a patent that comes out. Of, of the data, um, that, that can be a good reason for postponing making the data open. I mean, usually a funder will, at least in the U.S., if it's, it's going to, if there's somehow a patent or some other use that's coming out of the data that you need to embargo it for a period of time, putting that in your data management plan is important so that you can get, an, if, if you need to get some sort of exception. Um, and, um, and then again, just making sure that all of this is really clearly spelled out in your data management plan. Who owns it? What, what's the cop, what copyright um, restrictions are you going to put on it? Um, and what are the, um, um, you know, what are your, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. I think I lost it. So, um, the, so the activity that I have is, um, So it was created by um, a librarian at the University of Iowa Libraries. Her name is Megan O'Donnell, and she is a um, data management librarian. And she works um, teaching students about graduate students about data. And so what she came up with is a um, it's a it's a bingo game. And again, I have, have not played this, but I have um, bingo cards and a case study, and I'm going to pass them each out. Out, I'll pass each one out to you, um, and then I'll actually read through the case study as well, and we'll go through and see if anybody can get a bingo. Theoretically, there's so there are there are five bingo cards. I made multiple copies of them. So theoretically, from this case study, one of these cards should get a bingo. But again, I haven't tried it, so uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, so let's just give it a try. <laughs> 